first of all, because I need the money. <laughs> and secondly, because you're the only audience that I've ever told what this book is about. <coughs> Let me tell you what I've learned. I've learned that many people act like they read it and they read parts of it. That's right. Last summer, a man up by Gold Lake, my partner and I were performing up there. He says to me, he says, Tony, he says, uh, uh, do you know the date that the world will end? And I said, no. He said, well, it's August 16, 1987. And I said, well, I'll be damned. I says, where'd you get that? He says, that's Quetzalcoatl's date. And I said, who's Quetzalcoatl? And he says, well, he's a Mexican Indian. Don't you know of him? And I thought I'd just act dumb. And I said, no, I never heard of him. Did he actually say that? Oh, yes. Yes. And he has been reincarnated. He's living in Boulder. <laughs> I mean, that gets spooky, you know. <laughs> I tell you, I've met 29 other ones. Each one of them needed a shrink. Each one of them needed a shrink. And I tell you the most tragic part of it. They don't know a damn thing about what Quetzalcoatl means. They do not know anything about what they are talking about. That's the truth of it. And I tell you something else. Most of those people with their cracker heads at the University of Colorado, they too, I worked with them for five years. And I can tell you, they read each other's books. <laughs> <laughs> they run into a word called spirit. They fire the guy who wrote it. Immediately. Spirit is a cuss word. The man in Boulder up at Golden Lake up at Gold Lake, told me the date, and afterwards he said, he said uh, that that was the Quetzalcoatl date, and I said, well, I am Tony Sher. Did you ever hear of me? No. And that prompted the thought to me to say something about my work. Not one of my books, not one of my books have ever been negative about the death of the fifth son. The death of the fifth son, for a reason that I will share with you before you leave here tonight, and you will see it can hardly be considered a catastrophe unless we decide that for ourselves. I don't believe anyone can stop anyone from committing suicide. Not if they really want to do it. And if a lot of people really want to do it, I'll bet they do. I'll bet they do. I want to read you the first paragraph written by Vincent Brown. Out of the formlessness form was created. Out of dark, nothingness, light, and beauty were created. Out of a single atom's complex, molecules eventually came into being from which life was created. Now we look at a rainbow or a waterfall tossing down over mighty cliffs and we see the beauty. A tree traces its loveliness against a blue sky in springtime or a girl's laughter tinkles from the playing field and we become aware of beauty. Was all of this beauty, all of this intricate form and these marvelous patterns of life, of minerals, of liquids, of gases, created by blind impulse, or was there a creator, and did he have a plan? The very first paragraph of the book, in my own hand, the introduction, this is what it says. This, Lord of the Dawn, this, is a love story. And its history lies deep in the heart of ancient America. The story is set within the framework of a terrible and yet wonderful prophecy. The prophecy of the 13 heavens and 9 hells. This prophecy was carved on the rocks of the sacred city of Palenque in southern Mexico more than 1500 years ago. Carved 
developed in bliss and based on intricate mathematical calculations, it called for the near to utter destruction of all things in Indian America. In Indian America. But promised a fantastically beautiful and harmonious new world for those who kept the covenant with the Creator and the Earth Mother. Thus, all things that must be, must be in balance, and that takes practice. <clears throat> One other little part that I want to read. <clears throat> the earth was a virgin. Nothing grew from her, no trees, no flowers, no mountains and no streams. She was only endless matter turning through endless space. She was lonely and tired of waiting for something to create. Then the clouds found the earth and the earth felt the clouds surround her and she felt the thrill of life in her spirit. She was no longer alone. Now she could create and the clouds found the earth to be what the clouds had always wanted, a place to stop and a place to create. Then the clouds gathered together in great excitement. The clouds grew dark with the creative, with the weight of creativeness, with the weight of love. And the clouds rained down upon the earth. And she, the earth, reached up to touch the clouds with mountains of stone from her breast. And the creative forces of the clouds washed the mountains and formed the rivers. Then she, the earth, released the seeds of her flesh, and trees sprang forth with leaves and grass, leaped from her flesh to meet the fresh rain. Bushes and reeds, flowers sprang into being as a result of her love for the rain. The clouds, feeling the force of her love, rolling thunder and flashing with lightning, sacrificed part of his own spirit, and this and the spirit of the raindrops entered into every bush and reed flower, into every tree and every living thing. This was not enough, not enough of him. He lit the sky with lightning and sent forth the greatest sacrifice. This came in the form of guardians of the earth. Tiny spirits, Pakwachi spirits, Lorlucky spirits, spirits of the mountains, guardians of her breast. Spirits of the rocks, guardians of her love. Spirits of the rivers, guardians of her blood. Spirits of the valleys, guardians of her growth. Spirits of all things of the earth. And no particle of dust nor grain of sand was left without part of his spirit. And the little people danced through the darkness on the earth, singing the love song the clouds had taught them. And the earth now radiant with their creation, brought forth her own water. It came in the form of tears, tears of love, and tears of joy. And those tears, they are called springs. Then the creator of the clouds and the earth, the father of all fathers, saw what had happened when his creations had met, and he said, it is not yet finished. Now I will give form. Deer were first. Serpents next. Eagles and wolves followed. Hawks and dogs came. Birds with bright feathers. And all the insects and all the reptiles and animals came. And all things that live have their own story and their own reason for being. Then the Creator examined it all and he said, Good, now I will make humans. And immediately a man sprang from the oldest tree on earth. And in that same instant, a woman sprang from the same tree. And that tree is the tree of life. When they reached the dirt and stood up, they started to look for each other in the darkness. When they found each other, they started to look for food. 